Okay, this is notes 1-3, solving compound linear inequalities. Okay, on these here, and I'm gonna stand in front just for a second, I call these and, these are and statements, okay? The ands, if it has two inequalities, and then it has the x in between them, then that's an and. And how I give an example of that is, so you go to the vending machine and you had enough money to buy chips and a drink, then you would have chips and a drink. So it goes from this point shading in, and also this point shading in, so they would actually overlap. Never on an and, one that has them, separated, okay, or I'm sorry, in between, the x in between, will you ever have them go in the same direction or opposite directions, okay? Now, if we looked at one like number four on our notes, okay, number four on our notes is an or statement. That would be if I went to the vending machine, I didn't have enough money to buy both, so I'd have to choose, let me get a little lower here, I'd have to choose chips or a drink. So the graph will, will point out away from each other, each one of those. They will never point in the same direction and they will never overlap if it's an or. So that's a good way for you to kind of check your work. You'll see more of what I'm talking about as we progress through this. Okay, so first off, we look at it just like anything else. We go, okay, is there any, where's the variables at? And the variable is the x and it's in between, so it's in the middle, which is exactly where we want it to be. So it has a two with it, so it's two x. There are no more x's, so I don't need to worry about combining any more like terms as far as x's are concerned, so I bring my two bridges down, okay? Now on each side, on the right side, I already had a 15. On the left side, I had a negative five. In the middle, I had a positive three, so he has to get out of there. In order to do that, I have to do whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And as we learned in the previous lessons, whenever it crosses, any number crosses a bridge, it changes signs. So it was a positive three, it goes across as a negative three. Same thing when it crossed over here, a negative three. Now I clean it up, negative three minus five is a negative eight. And then I put in, I'm just filling everything in. Notice I haven't even said what the signs are yet, because we're just leaving them the same, nothing has changed. 15 minus 3 is 12. Now, same as we've done in order to solve for x, to get rid of that 2, I would just simply divide by 2. Whatever I do to one thing, I did everything else. So I've got to divide everything by 2. They cancel off. x is greater than negative 8 divided by 2 is a negative 4. And 12 divided by 2 is 6. I would box that, circle it, square it, whatever. That is one part of my answer. Now I have to take this and put it on the number line. Obviously, negative 4 comes first, and then 6 comes next. I look at my inequality. There is no equal to sign underneath it, no line under it, so I know it's an open circle at the 4. Same deal on the side of the 6. There is no line underneath, so it's an open circle, which means it does not include those points. Okay? If I read from the x and I cover up one side, it says x is... And it's touching the big side, so x is greater than negative 4. So that means I shade to the right. So it's going to be greater than negative 4. So it's not going to be negative 4, but it'll be greater than it. Then if I cover up the other side, x is going to be less than 6. So I shade to the left. And I can see they overlap. That's where I was talking about chips and a drink. Okay? Does not include these two points, so 6 and negative 4 cannot be answers. But any number in between them can be an answer. Okay, moving on to number two. I find my x and it is in between two inequalities and it has a three-fourths with it. So I drop, I didn't have any more x's, so I went ahead and dropped my gates, dropped my uh, bridges down, had a negative four on this side, a negative seven over here. In the middle, I had a negative seven. He has to get out of there. And of course, when he crosses the bridge, he changes signs, so it's a plus seven. 7 minus 7 is 0, which is less than or equal to 3 fourths x, which is less than or equal to negative 4 plus 7 is a 3. Now, I want to get rid of the 3 fourths. I don't want 3 fourths x, I want x. So in order to get rid of a fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by 4 thirds. Again, whatever I do to one thing, I have to do to everything else. Those cross out, the cross multiplication, leaves me an x. Bring down my signs. Anything times zero is zero. 
3 times 4 thirds, that's 3 times 4 is 12, divided by 3 is 4. Go ahead and box it, circle it, square it, whatever. Put them on the number line in numerical order, I've got 0 and 4. I look at the 0 side and it has an equal to sign underneath, so it is a closed end, it does include 0. Same thing with the 4, it has a line underneath, so it is also equal to. And if I'm reading it, I cover up one side, x is greater than or equal to 0, so it's shade to the right. And I cover up the other side, x is less than or equal to 4, so shade to the left. So it does overlap, chips and a drink again. Now it could be any solution, it could be the numbers in between, or it could be 0 and 4 as well, because it is inclusive of those, because it's equal to. Moving on to number 3. On uh, number three, I have a negative outside parentheses, so I, know I have to distribute that three. So I go ahead and like to put a one there, so it's negative one distributed through. So negative one times x is negative one x. Negative one times negative one is a positive one. Now I bring down my signs, bring down my ends, and I'm right back to where I was on one and two to start. So I find my x is in the middle, so I go ahead and write it down, negative one x, bring down my bridges. I have a 4 over here and a negative 4 on this side. I've got to get this 1 out of here. This positive 1 has to go across both sides. Positive 1, when it crosses, it changes to a negative 1. Clean it up. Negative 1 minus 4 is a negative 5. 4 minus 1 is 3. Now I've got to get rid of the negative 1. I don't want negative 1x on 1x. So when I divide by negative 1, bells and whistles go off. Beep, beep, beep. I divided by negative. That tells me I have to flip these two inequalities. So this one is no longer a greater than, it is now a less than or equal to. And this one is no longer less than, it is now a greater than sign. So negative 5 divided by negative 1 is a positive 5. 3 divided by negative 1 is negative 3. I circle it, box it, square it, whatever. Numerically on my number line, obviously negative 3 comes first. So I put it over here, put my 5 over here. On the 5 side, it is equal to, so I will have a colored in circle here. That means it includes the point five, uh, of 5. Over here on the other side though, the negative 3, it does not have an equal to, so it's an open circle. Same deal, if I cover it up, x is less than or equal to 5, so that shades to the left. x is greater than negative 3, shades to the right. So it's another chip and a drink, and obviously they know that because it's in the middle. And so it'll be shaded in the middle. So it'll include any of these points or answers, including 5, but not negative 3 because it is not equal to. Okay, number 4. We get to our ors, our chip or a drink. They're two separate ones. The x is already on the left side of the bridge, so I write it down. Close my bridge, I had a four. Bring the seven across, so it becomes a negative seven because it crossed the bridge. X is less than, four minus seven is a negative three. That one is done. Or, I have a negative one X over here. Close my bridge, put my one, take the seven across, that's a negative seven. Negative one X is less than, one minus seven is a negative six. Now divide by negative 1, bells and whistles, beep, 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 said divide by negative, so I have to flip the sign. The inequality is now greater than, a negative over a negative is a positive, 6 divided by 1 is 6, box that guy. Numerically, negative 3 goes first, and then 6. It is not equal to, so it's an open circle, not equal to for the 6, so it's an open circle. X is less than negative 3, so that shades to the left. X is greater than 6, shades to the right. So there's your chips or drink. So any answer outside here would be correct, or outside here would be correct. Negative 3 and negative 6, are, or positive 6, are not correct because they are not inclusive. Okay? All right, moving on to the next one, number 5. And again, you can slow this down, rewind uh, as many times as you want. 2x is already on the correct side, so I put down my 2x. There are no more x's. So I closed the bridge, there was a negative nine waiting for me. Took the negative one across, it became a positive one. 
So 2x less than negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8. Divide by 2 to get rid of that 2. x is less than negative 4. Box it in. Notice I didn't put the sign because I divided by a positive number. Or, on this side, I have 3x greater than or equal to, take the negative 15 across, positive 15, divide by 3, x is greater than or equal to 5. So now I go put them on the number line, negative 4 and 5. For the negative 4, it's going to be a, it's not equal to, so that will be an open circle. For the 5, it is equal to, so that's closed circle, so that means it includes 5 as one of my answer choices. X is less than negative 4, so it would be shaded to the left. So any of these answers outside, so lower than negative 4, are correct. X is greater than or equal to 5, so that means 5 and greater are all correct answers. For your work, you're going to do a 1-3, 1, 2, 4, and 6. This concludes the notes for a 1-3.